In 2017, I was fortunate to travel to the Holy Land on a Missio project visit. As part of our travels, we stayed at the convent of the Comboni Sisters in Bethany, the small town mentioned at the start of today's Gospel reading. When we arrived in Bethany, I was struck by two things. First, the views. The town is situated at the top of the Mount of Olives, overlooking Gethsemane. On the opposite side of the steep valley, about two miles away, you can see the now sealed Golden Gate of the Old City, where Jesus would have entered Jerusalem. The second thing that struck me was how busy the area was. In spite of being located at the top of a steep, steep hill, Bethany is heavily populated, making the place hectic and noisy. We can imagine it was similarly so on that first Palm Sunday. Back then, Passover pilgrims stayed in towns surrounding Jerusalem. It wasn't just custom, this was necessity. Up to 250,000 pilgrims would travel to Jerusalem for the festival, swelling the old city's regular population of 80,000. Although in Jesus' day Jerusalem was a grand and vibrant metropolis, Herod and the Roman governors would be anxious to distance thousands of enthusiastic pilgrims, many eager for a saviour to free them from their oppressors. On that first Palm Sunday, Jesus and his disciples must have felt on the edge of something momentous. We know from the things revealed by Jesus prior to his arrival in Bethany that he was well aware of the difficult mission that lay ahead. During my time in the Holy Land, it was clear to me that the priests and sisters we met had their eyes open to the challenges of their missionary work too. A great example would be the Comboni sisters who hosted us in Bethany. For many years, the sisters have run a popular nursery serving poor Palestinian families. Their work was threatened in 2004 when the Israeli authorities chose to run the West Bank barrier wall right through the convent grounds. Courageously, the sisters raised multiple objections and reluctantly it was agreed that the wall would not run through the grounds, but around three sides of the convent, dividing the sisters from the nursery and the Palestinian families they supported. The wall has meant that for the last 16 years, the sisters have lived between patrolling Israeli soldiers and their frustrated Palestinian neighbours. Despite various challenges, the sisters continue to run the nursery and do all they can to foster understanding by drawing conflicting communities together, finding new ways to work together and build a better future. In a recent interview, the convent superior said that the wall creates a very, very difficult situation, but she says, we are missionaries and missionaries are normally on the border. It's not by chance that we are here. We are here to attempt to make metaphorical holes in the wall. The Comboni sisters and other missionaries we met in the Holy Land also displayed a confidence in God's providence, seen too in today's Gospel reading, when Jesus casually tells his disciples where and how to acquire a cult. I saw this confidence too in Father Cahill, who in 2015 established the Marker School for Refugees in Jordan. The school is run from his parish and relies entirely on donations. Father Cahill explained that at times this has appeared to put the school's future in doubt. On one occasion a few years ago, donations dried up and there was no money left. Father Cahill called the school bursar, a lady called Sana, into the presbytery to explain the situation. Sana was obviously anxious, but Father Cahill appealed to her to have faith that God would provide. At the end of the meeting, an elderly couple arrived at the presbytery door, wanted to make a donation. The couple then handed over a bundle of denarii and said their goodbyes. When Father Cahill and Sana counted the money, it was just the right amount to keep the school open for the next month. This incident deeply affected Sana. It strengthened her trust in God. This coupled with a strong sense of mission enabled her to continue the great challenge of running the school. The Marker School for Refugees did not just provide education for Iraqi children, it gave witness in the community to humility, faith, hope and love. The same was evident on that first Palm Sunday. The witness Jesus gave as he travelled to Jerusalem was important. The road from Bethany would have been busy with pilgrims making their way to the temple, heading into the fortress city ruled by a heavy-handed occupier. Expectations would have surely been that the saviour would appear formidable and bold. He'd probably be dressed in battle gear, riding a stallion with an entourage of similarly impressive warriors. Jesus no doubt surprised and possibly amused many by choosing instead to travel on a humble donkey, surrounded by his unlikely band of disciples and followers. 
most of them used to living on the edge too. The sign he gave was one of an inclusive saviour, a peaceful revolutionary, a servant king, whose entourage were on the surface far from impressive, whose supporters brandished palm branches, not weapons. Now, as we find ourselves on the edge of Holy Week and on the edge of a post-Covid society, what lessons can we learn from that first Palm Sunday and the missionary disciples we've heard about this morning? Well, we can learn the importance of opening our eyes to the challenges that lay ahead, challenges in our church, in our community, in our world. We can ask ourselves, does our faith encourage us as it does the Comboni sisters to find new ways to respond to these challenges, to find solutions by working together with all people of goodwill? Can we, like Father Hill, trust in God's providence, not just financial, but perhaps more importantly, do we trust that God has enough mercy and love for us all? If so, do we commit to being instruments of this in our world? Because how else do we expect God's providence to work but through our generosity? And can we, like some of those gathered in Bethany on that first Palm Sunday, abandon preconceptions and allow God to surprise us with unexpected signs of his presence in the world? Of course, following these lessons won't be easy. The events of Holy Week evidence that the journey of faith can be difficult, confusing and sometimes seem hopeless. But this time next week, we'll be reminded again that even when all appears battered and broken out of sight, God is still holding everything together. <laughs>